thanking the Neuroscience Institute for having me here. Uh, certainly, I appreciate it. And uh, uh, it's very nice of you to, to invite me to, to be here uh, this morning. And um, today, I, I want to talk to you a little bit about some uh, tips for living with epilepsy and, and working with people who have epilepsy for uh, many, many years. I have stumbled across some things uh, that they've taught me. Basically, it's been people who have epilepsy who have taught me most of these things that I'm going to share with you today that uh, seem to work for them in, in, in dealing with their epilepsy. Um, my first slide today kind of uh, dovetails in, in, in what we were talking about with the last presentation, and that has to deal with depression. Depression is a very, very serious issue for people who have epilepsy. Uh, approximately 29% of the patients with epilepsy have major depressive episodes at some point in their life. Uh, we also know that uh, 11 to 60% of patients with epilepsy also have some form of depression. 50% of the patients with epilepsy who are suffering from depression never get any type of treatment. That treatment has to start with you. It has to start with the fact that you say, hey, look, you know, I'm, I've been feeling blue. I've been feeling sad for a long period of time. It's having an effect upon my life. And doctor, what can you do to assist me? So it, that particular subject certainly has to be broached. Uh, so please make sure to discuss that with your physician if, in fact, this does seem to be, be happening to you. A lot of times, uh, we, we ourselves may not be the best uh, gauge of how we're doing. Sometimes our, our mates or our, our significant others can also help us in, in discovering whether or not we are in, in, in a depressive episode. It's very, very important. Um, you know, and, and the, the depression can be caused by many different things. It can be caused by maybe your seizure origin, your uh, anti-epileptic medication side effects, lifestyle, and your level of seizure control. So please, make sure that you do talk to your doctor. Now, epilepsy is difficult to, enough to have to deal with without having uh, depression on top of it. And certainly, it is very, very treatable. So I'd encourage you to think about that. And, you know, w when you get that little survey that, that you get every time you go to the doctor where you're, you're checking off those boxes, do it honestly, <laughs> okay? Okay. Um, for my next slide, uh, I've, I've actually got a story to tell you. And the story's about Mary. Mary showed up at, at uh, our office about, I think, probably about six weeks ago. And um, she's a... She's a college student. She's going to be a teacher. So she's going to go into what I consider to be a, a really nice profession. And she's going to be a teacher, and she's over at NKU. Now, Mary came in, and she was quite upset. She had recently had a seizure while she was at service in her church, and she explained to me that usually what happens, if she has seizure activity, it usually happens at night and she's in the privacy of her own home. And here this was the first time that this happened out in, uh, her, in uh, one of the communities that she really enjoys being in. So she was very, very embarrassed about it. We talked a little bit further, and uh, I, I came to find out that Recently, uh, Mary had uh, completed midterms, and she's a very dedicated student, so she was up very, very late. She was working really, really hard um, on those memory tasks that, <laughs> that, we, that we heard of earlier, trying to cram that information in so that she would be able to get really good grades. In addition to that, Mary shared that recently, the cat that she had for 15 years it had gone to kitty heaven. Not only that, just prior to the seizure, she had helped her boyfriend pack up and move to Louisville so he could pursue a, a career opportunity. And as we sat there, it, Mary began to realize some of those things that had been happening in her life 
all those particular things that had been going on that all led to, oh, to that seed, I'm sorry, I talk with my hands, uh, the, uh, that led to that seizure in, in, in our church. Because, in fact, all those things came together and were precipitating causes for her seizure activity. And my next slide actually deals with some of those precipitating factors as far as seizures are concerned. Uh, mismedications, sleep deprivation, stress and tension, hormonal changes, drug and alcohol use or, or abuse, and an overall change in the person's health. Any one of these things can place you at a higher risk of having seizure activity. And I think part of the job of, of having epilepsy is to be able to come to the realization that you're at an increased risk. To be able to say, hey, you know what? Uh, you know, I've got, a, I've got a bad cold today. Maybe this isn't the best day for me to be pursuing certain activities because I'm at a greater risk of having seizure activity. Now, maybe I should make sure that even though I do have this cold, I'm getting enough sleep, that I'm taking my medication as prescribed, that I'm doing things to deal with stress and tension. By being able to gauge those, those levels of those stressors, what we can do is actually we can decrease the number of seizures that we have by, in fact, learning to uh, actually uh, regulate our activities depending on these particular stressors. So, so something that I've, I've learned from uh, various people who have epilepsy. Watch out for those per precipitating factors. They're, they're pretty real. Okay, other things uh, I wanted to talk to you about today are know and respect your seizures. Um, oftentimes, people learn about epilepsy from those who have it. They have no clue. The general public has basically very little knowledge regarding epilepsy or, or, or seizure activity. And so primarily, those who have to do the education of people with epilepsy are those who have it. So what I would ask you to do is please learn what type of seizure activity you have. I know people who come and see me and they'll say, you know, Tom, I don't have the big seizures. I have the little seizures. I say, oh, we're having pizza for lunch? <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, know what type of seizure activity you have so that you can put a label on it for other people so that they can begin to get a handle on something that they might find very mysterious. Also, please, know what typically happens during your seizure. That's important in letting somebody know what it looks like. Okay, look, when, you know, I start mumbling and wandering around, that isn't because I was, uh, I, I, I was uh, doing something crazy, it's because I'm having seizure activity. You know, I'm not, having a, I'm not having a breakdown, I'm experiencing a seizure. So let people know exactly, or at least as close as you can, as to what happens when you have a seizure, so that they can better recognize it. The better they recognize it, the more able they are going to be able to actually address what to do for you during that seizure. Let other people know what to do if, in fact, you have seizure activity. We have these wonderful little things at the Epilepsy Foundation. They're called seizure first aid cards. You know, and, and I know s some people here who uh, <laughs> usually take a stack with them, <laughs> okay, to share with their friends and with people who actually uh, they come in contact with. Hey, I have epilepsy. Here, this is what you do for me if I have a seizure. So what it does is it lets people know. Most people fear uh, an individual who's having seizure activity. Not, not because of you, but because of the fact that they don't know how to handle it. They're not sure what to do. They don't know when to call for emergency assistance. Those are things that we need to talk to people about in order to reassure them so that they can respond appropriately to us. It takes the pressure off of them. It also takes that pressure off of us. 
because it's an issue that's been addressed. Also, I would encourage you to please keep a, a, a detailed seizure calendar. And you want to put that in your memory book, certainly. Or you can even do that on, online. Um, the uh, epilepsy.com has a uh, uh, subsite that is entitled Seizure Tracker, seizuretracker.com. And you can keep a, a, a listing of your seizure activity online, and it's very nice because you can download that stuff and take it to your doctor's appointment. So you need to keep track of your, your seizure activity and when and if it happens. You know, um, do, and do it right away. <laughs> don't don't think, oh, I'll do this. I'll do this tonight when I get home. Because what happens is oftentimes even the fact that you had seizure activity can escape you. Okay, so do it right away. Okay. Anti-epileptic medication. Know what your medication's name or names are and also the dosage that you take. If, in fact, you have seizure activity and you end up being transported to an emergency room, they are going to want to know that information. So have that information available. Um, I know people who keep that information in their wallets or even on their phones so that they've got that information. They can say, oh, here it is, and this is the dosage that I'm taking. It's very, very important to know. Know if you take brand name or, or generic medications. Some people still uh, want to take brand name medications, and certainly, um, you know, uh, they need to know that whether or not it's brand or whether it's a, a generic equivalent. Please know your medication side effects. Now, you could probably spend the rest of your life trying to memorize all the different side effects to your medications. Okay, there's this huge long sheet that, that they give you. Um, what I'm going to ask you to do is know those very, very important side effects. There's usually two or three side effects that your doctor will talk to you about and say, hey, look, if you have this, you need to call the office and let me know. Those are the particular types of, of side effects that you need to be aware of, those that, that uh, can in indicate that there's a serious problem and a serious reaction to your medication. Please pre-plan your refills. I myself am sometimes guilty of not doing this. I can, I can uh, attest to the fact that on a Friday night, I'll show up uh, at uh, the Kroger Pharmacy in order to fill uh, my blood pressure medication, and what happens? They inform me that, guess what, Tom, you don't have any refills left. Luckily, I've, I'm on a first-name basis with some of the people there, and they give me enough to get me by until they can contact my doctor's office and get the prescription refill. So uh, pre-plan your refills. Uh, also, check your prescription for accuracy before you leave the pharmacy. Make sure that what they're telling you you're getting is actually what you're getting. Uh, sometimes uh, changes can be made in that particular area. And, you know, even though pharmacists are wonderful people, they are human beings and can make mistakes. Communicating with your doctor. One of the most important things that you do in your treatment of, epi of, of your epilepsy is to communicate with your doctor. Arrive at your appointment on time with written questions and concerns. I experience waiting room amnesia. After I've looked at last year's Sports Illustrated, I think it might be that. It's, 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 the, it's the publications that they have in there. I look at last year's Sports Illustrated, and my memory just goes. And by the time I get back there to talk to my doctor, guess what? I don't know a thing. Yeah. Well, why are you here? You know. <laughs> you know. And even though he likes to see me, certainly, uh, you know, it's, it's not a social type of, of, of event. Okay? So write down your concerns. The other secret is that most physicians love to read things. That's what they, that, that's how they learn. They learn by reading. So uh, they're, they're uh, very visually driven type of people. So give them something to read and, and they'll love you for it. Also bring your seizure calendar. That's another way to make your neurologist smile. Present him with your seizure calendar uh, every time you go uh, for a, a visit. Certainly that makes uh, his job easier, and it makes it a heck of a lot easier on your memory, too, trying to figure out, how was I doing the last 
three, three to six months. Bring a list of all your medications, including the over-counter medications that you have. Uh, you know, some over-the-counter medications can have an effect upon uh, anti-epileptic medications and can also affect your uh, seizure control. So make your doctor aware of those particular meds. Communicate openly and honestly with your doctor. I know some people who have gotten themselves into, into trouble by maybe changing their medication dosage or how often they're taking it without communicating that to their doctor. And they get into the office and suddenly their level's low or they're having breakthrough seizures. So the physician naturally maybe bumps that medication up. So suddenly the person's taking, the physician thinks they're taking one dosage and the person is actually taking another dosage. So please, um, don't change your medication dosage without talking to your doctor first. Uh, you, need to, you need to have a, a, a honest uh, session with your physician. And I think lastly, most importantly, um, you have to maintain your sense of humor. You have to find something that you can find enjoyment in in, in uh, life, um, whether that be a hobby, a collection, um, you know, watching the Bengals win another football game, whatever it may be. But you have to find something that, that can actually uh, provide you with some enjoyment. Um, I do want to talk about another thing. This is, and, and this excites me. This, I, I find this very, very exciting. It's called the Empatica Embrace Smartwatch. Uh, this is a smartwatch that you wear, and what it does is it notifies you and notifies other people when, in fact, you're having seizure activity. So what it, it, it'll do is it'll notify up to four or five people that you've had a seizure or that you're having a seizure. Uh, it's for generalized tonic-conic seizures. Uh, it it uh, alerts. It dis it'll even dispatch a, a 911 for you. It captures uh, real-time physical data, and it's uh, and it can also be a means of stress management for you. Sorry, the last bullet's kind of messed up there, but basically, it's coming onto the market. And uh, I think it's going to be a, a wonderful uh, device for folks who have epilepsy because what it does is it gives you new freedom, okay, and certainly it, it helps uh, actually record the fact that you've had seizure activity. So something that's, that's uh, going to be uh, relatively inexpensive and something that certainly uh, I would encourage you to look into. Um, it's for, you know, and it's for anybody, you know, young children can have this, um, and it's also good for adults. Um, so the Empatica smartwatch, I think it's, it's going to be a, a, a real a boon uh, to epilepsy. One more thing um, in epilepsy detection is an epilepsy detection app. This downloads to your phone, so if, so if you have a Windows or a mobile 1.6, uh, you can see the bullets where it's the ones that it's not compatible to, and it's an accelerometer. So again, it's for tonic-conic seizure activity. And it, it notifies the caregiver with a cancellation, fig, uh, uh, cancellation feature. So if it detects that you're having seizure activity, what it does is it gives you 30 seconds to hit the button to say, no, that's not a seizure. And it tends to learn from that. So it, it, it'll adjust the parameters as to when it alerts. Um, it does have a GPS feature, so not only does it tell people that you're having seizure activity, it also tells them exactly where you are when you're having seizure activity, which is kind of a cool thing. It has an audible alarm, um, and it's free. This app is free, and you'll see the last bullet how to uh, uh, obtain this. The only drawback is that it's hooked to your phone. So, you know, I don't think it would be very uh, appropriate to, to, for when you're asleep or, you know, for those of us who leave our phone at home sometimes, it may not work too well. But something to, to be aware of. Um, these are the services that we uh, offer at the Epilepsy Foundation. We offer individual and family counseling. We have support groups. We have epilepsy education, information and referral. Uh, we provide employment assistance, assistance, 
we have uh, Camp Flame Catcher, and we uh, have school support services. So we offer a number of different things at the Epilepsy Foundation. And one of the ways that we're able to offer those is through our um, various events that we have. Um, we have one coming up in, uh, it's gonna be March 19th. That, that date at the bottom there is from last year's logo. But uh, we'd ask you all to maybe think about joining us uh, at the Emerald Miles to maybe walk or run and support the Epilepsy Foundation. Uh, with that, I would like to thank you for your time and for your attention. Thank you very much.